Okay, let's talk about Malibu Comics, who most people know from kind of one of two things, either the company that kind of started Image, sort of, but not really, they were involved somehow, or the company that Marvel built, and then there were some characters over there I loved, and now they're all gone. Now, there's a lot more to Mar Malibu than that. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, this is Perch, uh, kind of giving an overview to Malibu Comics, and, and sort of like the cross-gen video, there's zero chance to really go into all the details in all of like 15 to 20 minutes uh, at most that we'll do for here, but I, I am doing more. I will get into the details just like with cross-gen, and I have had a few people reach out. I've had three people reach out from cross-gen wanting to give their side of the story. What's interesting is one guy reached out to say, hey, you know, the, the owner was actually really nice and he was good to us, and another guy reaching out saying, you're completely wrong you guys a monster and you gotta you gotta go into that i love different opinions it's always swell uh but anyway uh, please if you are involved in these companies you want to give a statement on the record even off the record whatever else i'm happy to take it i will do more on this the goal is to to start to get some basic things out there and then build from there it's obviously skimming over a lot of the history but let's kind of uh, walk into what was Malibu. Well, Malibu was formed in the mid 80s uh, by a guy named Tom Mason and Dave Ulbrich. And they had a big kind of uh, financial backer, this guy named uh, Scott Mitchell Rosenberg. And Scott Mitchell Rosenberg um, basically was in comics from the beginning, but he's a big entertainment guy. And he can boast, I think, one of the younger, there are others, but uh, as a producer, somebody who was able to get some deals done and make some, um, you know, some, some money happen. But he basically started at 13. Um, doing a mail order company and uh, graduating from from University of Denver, represent. So anyway, he uh, ran a distribution a distribution company called Sunrise Distributors. So it was never one of the bigger ones, but it basically he he was able to make some money off that. It was a good time to be a distributor, and he uh, he basically financed uh, Malibu and. He also, uh, you know, put some money into some other publishers, including uh, Air Cell and Adventure Comics and Eternity. Maybe we'll get to those as well. And um, anyway, so so Malibu gets, so I would say, some luck. They uh, start a title called X Mutants, which I think was black and white, as I recall. And it was uh, it was a cult hit. It did very very well, and um, it uh, it turned out to be uh, really good. And X Mutants kind of turned into Men in Black. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're familiar with that, so some, some good cash, uh, happened there. And then, uh, Sunrise goes out of business, uh, fairly shortly after. Um, and, but the, you know, some money had been made and, and basically, uh, Rosenberg is a deal guy. So, uh, Malibu, uh, gets, gets some, some, you know, some success going and they acquire, uh, some other comic companies, both as kind of imprints, but it's, it's, it's like, for all intents and purposes, an acquisition. And so Malibu grows. And it's it's not a big company, but it's stable. It's stable-ish, <laughs> as you could say, in the late 80s. So then uh, Rosenberg, who is known in the comic industry as, as I would say, I don't know, here's one of those cases where I know there's some people who disagree with me, but um, but Rosenberg was was known as a guy who could get things done from a money perspective. He was a he was a deal guy. And I don't think Rosenberg had a major baggage, although again, this is where somebody will come in and explain to me what, what massive uh, baggage he does have. But generally, I think he was seen as a, a fairly, fairly level-headed guy who knew where money was. And so, <laughs> again, I'm just, I, I, I don't know. I've heard other stories over the years, but they always seem very kind of crazy and fantastical. And um, I, I would say Rosenberg... Um, was a determined guy, very much like a lot of people in comics of the 80s. There's a lot of people in comics today who, who really dislike him, but they can never exactly pinpoint why. Um, he, he, uh, he certainly had ups and downs, but, but anyway, this all comes into play later. So basically, um, Malibu, uh, basic in uh, 92, um, early 92, um, helps... Uh, basically get Image Comics uh, out and distributed. So Image Comics is a new uh, imprint. All happened very quickly. They didn't have uh, a publisher account with any of the distributors, but Malibu did. 
And so, um, they, you know, basically they helped get Image Comics launched in 92. And so that's why you see uh, very early comics, like Youngblood, number one, had Malibu branding on it, uh, somewhere or another. But anyway, gave them a brief little boost. And when Malibu started publishing uh, Image, they briefly surged ahead of DC as the number two uh, kind of, uh, you know, you know, comic company. Kind of, so, kind of, sort of. Uh, it, it, it's not as simple as that. But yes, um, in, in the comics market share of the direct market. So at any rate... Um, but Image it quickly leaves, of course, Image founds its own destiny in 93, and off they go. So Malibu, at the time, is uh, trying to get into video games. They're seeing kind of the rise of that medium. I think there was a statement made saying, one day people, you know, kids won't want to ever pick up a comic book. They won't want to deal with paper. They'll be just doing everything with video games and handhelds, and that's going to be the new entertainment, so we need to play there, which a lot of people dismissed as being crazy talk. What kids would ever want a video game in their hand. I mean, God, can you, how could they even afford such a thing? Uh, but at any rate, so they started uh, pushing into Malibu Interactive and video games and Rosenberg starts uh, doing a lot of deals in Hollywood. And uh, so, so anyway, he kind of, th th things kind of segue uh, that direction. And, uh, you know, they, they're successful. They, they basically found this, their own superhero line, trying to cash in on a lot of what Marvel and DC and Image were doing and Valiant called the Ultraverse line. And uh, this, this was briefly popular, I would say. I uh, had a couple of comics uh, that were, were pretty strong um, and successful. And, and a lot of fans kind of really remember that, especially in the, in the early 90s, as being, um, you know, some, some pretty entertaining properties. And, uh, and meanwhile, Rosenberg and the leadership are really pushing to get signed with talent agencies and uh, you know, they, they signed some deals to do music comics called Rocket Comics. And there, there's basically this big push to do a lot outside of what I would call traditional comics. But what else happened in the 90s? You know, the comic industry sort of tanks. And so it, this finally leads to a fairly rapid, um, you know, they, they had canceled some of their lower selling titles. And then in late 94, there's a pretty rapid acquisition by Marvel who I think was also seeing the writing on the wall and was trying to buy up market share. So they Marvel buys Malibu and, um, and Mason and Elm leave the company at that point. Uh, for all intents and purposes, they're all gone. Rosenberg gets a, a VP of Marvel title. And, uh, and then Marvel proceeds to cancel the entire Ultraverse line, basically kind of shutter Malibu. They, they briefly tried a couple things. I think you had uh, a vault, you know, uh, what, Malibu, um, I'm forgetting what the name of it was. It was like A2 and um, and basically a volume two series. It was their, their attempt to kind of maybe try to, to get a new market by uh, putting some new comics outside of, of continuity. Um, and so it, but, but it didn't really take and Mar about Marvel basically did nothing with Malibu uh, after about 98. I think by about 98, they were done. And so that was it. So that was, that was, in effect, the end of Malibu. Now, Rosenberg uh, continued to do various things um, in kind of, uh, you know, of, uh, I would say other means. Um, he was involved working with Adobe. So if you're a techie guy, uh, this, there's this little program called Photoshop coming out. And uh, Rosenberg was, was pushing getting Photoshop as a standard tool to color comic books. And he, and, and, and he was ba doing a lot with film. Uh, and, and he made some money. I, I think he, he, he basically, I mean, he made some money. He also had some studios that lost a lot of money. So, I mean, he was, he's a Hollywood guy who knows exactly how he's doing. Um, he's teaching classes now and he's apparently very successful there. But the other question that happened with Malibu is, uh, every now and then somebody comes up and says, Hey, you know, why doesn't Marvel do anything with Malibu and with these characters? And uh, basically, uh, Joe Casada says, I hear you. Um, he's given a couple interviews to this effect, and he always alludes to some deep, dark problem, that there's a bunch of dirty laundry and some some really awful things going on there. And, you know, you'll, you, you wouldn't believe it if I told you, but it's not my place to get in here and tell, air this dirty laundry. And when asked kind of directly if the issue is related to royalties, um, you know, Casada acknowledges that there is some, but no, that's not the problem. There's some some bigger, deeper problem. And uh, other people have kind of throughout the years, 
at Marvel kind of alluded to there being kind of deep, dark secrets uh, that, uh, you know, mystery reasons why Malibu can't be published. Um, unfortunately, no one's really sure what these secrets are. Uh, I've, I've personally talked to a number of people at Malibu. Other people um, within Malibu have given statements over the years saying they have no idea what Casada is talking about. Um, and the only thing they can think of is that, um, you know, that uh, basically there's, there's a, a, a deal structure that if Marvel publishes the Ultraverse characters, 5% of the profits uh, have to go to the creators, uh, which is a, you know, that, that are still alive, which is a, a weird addendum. But at any rate, um, there's, there's a number of, there is apparently a number of financial deals tied up in these characters with royalties and other things that make it impossible, quote unquote, impossible for Marvel to publish more because, you know, bluntly, they, they don't want to share the money or they don't want to account for where these sales are coming from. Or maybe it's just too hard to tell what actually is sold. There is a rumor I heard at one point uh, that uh, part of the deal had to be uh, royalties on sell through. So somehow you'd have to track what actually sold through in the comic store in order to calculate the royalty and need to go to the creators. And how do you do that logistically? Maybe there's no way to do that. And so at any rate, the library sits on the shelf. Um, there definitely was some level of bad blood or, or some sense of conflict between uh, Rosenberg and people at Marvel. Uh, you know, again, uh, Tom Brevoort and um, Joe Casada have frequently pointed to the NDA that uh, is affected gag order, but that's kind of a weird, um, it, 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 anyway, some fallout happened, some payment changed hands. And as a result of that, uh, in India was made. It's not uncommon that when people leave and you know, Rosenberg was a VP at Marvel uh, as part of this deal, that part of his exit included a, you know, non disparagement clause or, you know, part of that is so that could be part of what's going on. At any rate, there's some bad blood. You're not getting more Mal Malibu comics is, is a long and the short of it. Uh, is it because of money? Probably. But, you know, is there something else lurking in there? Maybe. So the interesting things about Malibu, and this is where we're skating over a lot of the details, um, they were, you know, I think there was some, some cleverness in the leadership, at least, to try and go after many different properties. They were diversifying their line way before other publishers were thinking about it, and they were trying to create a stable networked business where nothing was standing up on one particular genre, and that was smart. Um, their, their titles with Malibu were always, I think, clever um, in the sense of, you know, they, they, they understood they were going for a new market and they leaned into it pretty effectively. So it, it either worked for you or it didn't, but they, if it did, it, they, were, they were good about responding to it. And in addition to that, um, there's, there, uh, you know, I think they, it, what they did with Image in terms of helping them accelerate into getting a publishing deal helped uh, Image immensely uh, because basically these creators were able to you know, be really hot at Marvel and then almost immediately jump ship and be hot with their own company. There wasn't that startup time. There wasn't that negotiation. I think there was concerns that Marvel or DC might try and block them or slow the process down, basically give these artists a cool down period before they came onto the scene. So working through Malibu was a way to kind of, uh, you know, rapidly put that together and, and basically gives them some cash. It allowed uh, the image guys to put out less of their own money. I don't mean that in a negative way. It just it allowed them to not pay for some of the startup costs they might have had to pay uh, right out the gate. So that it's it's an interesting gambit what they did there. I mean, arguably, there's um, there's a good world out there for a current publisher who wants to do more with imprints. Basically, wants to tap into more of the the kind of the the young guys who want to come out and, and make a company. There's also, though, been a number of changes uh, to the terms and conditions at Diamond to kind of prevent this from really happening. So it's 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 un, it's unclear if this would uh, be able to happen again. But Malibu's an interesting case. It was an interesting company. They're trying a lot of interesting things. Um, kind of the the end baggage of you know they sell to Marvel and into the graveyard they go uh, is is a continual story. I mean you'll hear that pop up a lot with uh, Cross Gen and being bought by Disney. And then uh, Malibu being bought by Marvel, and then just stuff goes on the shelf. So, obviously, I think there's some creators in there, uh, some some well-known creators uh, who did 
work for Malibu, who probably would like a royalty check at some point. But anyway, that's the story. So now the question is to you. Did you love Malibu, hate it, care about it, never heard of it before? What do you think? Uh, let me know your Malibu thoughts or, or anything you want regarding this topic in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Hey, if you like the channel and you want to support it, subscription, uh, you know, click to subscribe. Why not? You can hear my nonsense all the time. Lots of videos. Otherwise, hey, uh, follow me on social media, shoot me an email. But most importantly, thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.